Welcome to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Join me on a journey back home to your truest self in this inspiring, enlightening, and entertaining show. After a near-death experience in a car crash at 15 years old, I made a choice to stay and brought back with me three simple truths that I found from the other side. Love is all there is, our time is over here quicker than we think, and we all have a purpose, a soul blueprint to fulfill. On this show, you will find a higher purpose, a creative expression, and unique soul attributes that you can bring forth into this world. Stay tuned with me for the next hour and find your higher purpose on My Wild Magic, starting now. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being on uh, the podcast today, My Wild Magic with Adrian. I am Adrian Cobb, and today I'm so excited to have on the show uh, Phyllis Russo. And uh, she's a healer I've been recently working with, and it's been a uh, made a huge difference in my healing process on multiple levels. So um, yeah, so today we are going to be covering live, unplugged, and defying gravity. Phyllis is definitely a healer um, that defies gravity and she does shamanic healing and she's an extraordinary light worker bringing healing to us on a multi-dimensional level of consciousness. Um, Phyllis uh, has a genius ability to traverse the issues that need healing, not only from a scientific human body wisdom and insight, but also she's able to uh, bring us into a much broader esoteric multiverse healing as well. So she'll be talking to us today about the deeper essence of healing our body, heart, and soul through quantum vibrational resonance. Uh, Phyllis is a super unique star beam, you know, it's her tribe of light, like this very um, eclectic, far out, bringing in healing energy from the future star being who operates at a genius level. She has a doctor of chiropractic, certified applied kinesiology, licensed acupuncture, certified functional endocrinology, certified transpersonal counselor, and shamanic practitioner. When I saw that, I'm like, oh my God, you like do everything under the sun. <laughs> so with such a plethora of wisdom, uh, spirit connection, uh, mediumship work and modalities, she pulls it all together with working with people with an advanced frequency uh, frequency vibrational technology called the Healy. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about that today. So Phyllis, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, yeah, anything else you want to uh, Nothing I want to add, <laughs> nothing I want to add, except if you don't mind, can you just like walk with me everywhere? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For your walking billboard of yeah. uh, yeah. self-esteem, confidence and empowerment. Yes. <laughs> I just, yeah. I, you gas station, I don't, any place, just yeah. <laughs> introduce me. Oh, by the way, this is, yeah. um, no, I have, I have nothing to add. Thank you so much for bringing me on. Um, I always want this, like, I want to be able to be a billboard for what can be healing in this world. So this is perfect for me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so, uh, you know, when you first got started on your journey, what do you think kind of got you started? Because you you are one of those very advanced kind of futuristic, probably don't fit into modern day society all that well. <laughs> so, you know, having that going for you, um, what kind of led you into your um, healing journey, really becoming you know, so service oriented as you are? I mean, you are very streamlined and mm -hmm. hyper focused in your service. So, mm -hmm. What kind of was the trigger for you? So are we taking it from my childhood? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going back that far. <laughs> yeah. Take it back to the beginning of your journey. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, uh, probably mom. Mom was just sick and always wow. sick. And um, so I think unconsciously, subconsciously, I just wanted to heal my mom. And, um, and so... The first thing I went into, I think, I mean, now you're really making me think was, um, massage therapy. Yep. That was my, one of my first ones too. Yeah. I did that for quite a few years. I lived in uh, Las Vegas at the time. Uh, my, my husband at the time was handicapped. He had MS and he was blind. Wow. People wow. used to ask me, why did you, you know, well, how could you marry a blind man? And, and it was like, but I, at that point, it was a little bit on the emotional lower level, which was, um, well, you know, I didn't feel real good about myself. And I thought I'd only be with somebody that could need me. Yeah. Boy, that is the calling card for most yeah. relationships. <laughs> 
So, so I was very aware of that. Um, we were together for over 10 years. And during that time, I also had a calling for chiropractic. My son was very ill at one time as a baby. Wow. Really? Um, yeah. He was uh, prone to febrile seizures, had a grand mal minute long seizure in my arms. It was horrendous. Wow. And, um, and so we found through our pediatrician out there, uh, a, a gentleman who did applied kinesiology and was a chiropractor. Um, his name was Dr. Dale Anderson. Um, and we started going to him. I saved up my money at the time to see this guy. And we took him off of heavy medication for the seizures. And he was on his way to health the rest of his life. Wow. And still to this day, fighting good causes. So my son, I'm incredibly proud of almost yeah. at the age of well, he would hate for me to say it. So I'll still say 39. Um, so in any case, um, let's see what happened next. Cause I want to jump all the way to Malta. So I'm trying to streamline, bring it back a little bit. So I went into chiropractic. I was so enamored by this man. I wanted to ease the, 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 the maternal pain of a parent when their child is sick. And I said, that's it. Going back to chiropractic college, moved to St. Louis, Missouri, uh, went to chiropractic at Logan University there. And then from there, where did I move? Uh, oh, my God. Like, I'm forgetting where I've moved. Oh, I moved to. So I had my practice there for 20 years. I did acupuncture. I, every patient that I couldn't fix, guess what? I learned some different modality. That kind of explains it because what I'm looking, I'm looking, okay, you had a sick mom, then you had your husband, then you had your son. So I can definitely see like on the deeper emotional level, unconscious level, your drive, like what kind of sort of puts you on that path to being a healer, nothing like creating a healer than giving them people who need to be <laughs> healed. Right. Yeah. But really, this is like the thing where I feel like you have that live unplugged defying gravity type of energy to you that you're not. Yeah, I'm a chiropractor. I'll do the best I can for you. It's like, no, I'm going to do this. And then I will learn anything in the world that I need to learn if it means helping you. I mean, that is a unique quality of superhuman drive. I think that not everybody has that you're willing to incorporate whatever it takes. And actually, I mean, I'm just impressed with your list of how many things you're willing to go get trained in and learned at a very high professional level. Nothing half-assed here about what you're doing, you know? I, um, I love the way you say it. You say it so much better than how I think it because I, you know, I really do feel on an emotional level and I'll start with that on an emotional level. It is that place of, um, I'm not good enough. And so if I can't fix that person for a while, it wasn't even, I'm going to do it to fix that person. It was almost like I need to put, put, Sorry, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I almost need to um, prove something to myself. Yeah. And, but then when I started really getting into a higher energy, I just knew I was destined for this anyway. So why, you know, I don't care what emotional reason or what place that I thought I was broken. It, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't coincide. It actually with does. Who I am. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day. Right. Yeah. Right. And so that, that was it. I mean, it really was, I was constantly learning. I was constantly traveling. Um, then I, then I started counseling and I did that through the same place you and I started probably um, that was global relationship centers back in the day. Yeah. And then train to teach. So, so with your counseling, I just want to slow down a little bit. Okay. So, you know, people know counseling, therapy, thing like that. But what do you think, what is it that makes it transpersonal counseling or psychology? Like what makes it that? So it's going to be its own unique brand. Okay. So I'm going to tell you that I, not only did I train with them, because I think that that they did have that transpersonal there. I don't know if everybody had it though. But the element was there and, and, and I really wanted to counsel. My, I took it <clears throat> to counsel my patients. I really didn't take it to teach the, the class, yeah, 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 but yeah, I yeah. took it because it was that one other element that needed to be addressed when somebody even had a car accident. 
Mm-hmm. I wasn't the chiropractor that said, oh, give me the motor vehicle accidents, but I got them. And one of my first questions I would ask is, so what was going on in life when this happened? Yeah. You know, they'd kind of look at me, but it was such an essential part of their healing. So I agree. What I noticed when I work with my clients is that every time somebody says I had an accident or this Mm -hmm. happened, I'm like, what was happening three or four days, a week, a month before, like what was going on before the accident, before this and the other? Because I find that things are really not that arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Usually there's something because we're all vibrational beings, which is something I think you're a specialist is, is looking at vibrational energies on multiple levels here is that it does. There's really usually something kind of driving the event that's that is going to occur oftentimes, mm-hmm. you know, even um, if it's still teaching. Yeah. And w- one of the other studies that I did was a course in miracles. That was a pretty much an everyday study for two years. I want to say I studied that with a, a mutual uh, mentor and friend of ours, uh, Blair, and we read a course in miracles f- front to back cover to cover yeah. Every guide, every, the student guide, everything on that. Yeah. I do not and, have the mental intellect to stay up with it all. So Blair would give me cliff note version, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was not easy. I mean, and that's why it would take every day for two years. I, I don't know how many days we missed out of that 365 times two. So it was, um, but it, but it changes the way one counsels, it changes it from personal to transpersonal. And that I think is where I really, really made the shift. Okay. And so transpersonal, so you have the personal, you know, taking things personal, blaming one another, feeling you need forgiveness, the whole human aspect, right. But transpersonal, what makes that jump? What makes it the transpersonal? Like more of a spirit intuition. Intuition. Now, it's not to say that every counselor doesn't have intuition, because I think most counselors work with intuition, their yeah. intuition, but I don't know if they know it. So the, the reliance, and especially even in my own background, the reliance of, of how I was taught, my experience from a research basis, my education, and how I just hear. When I'm in a shamanic state, Some of that information comes in that I know I've had experience with and learning with, but transpersonal means to me that the information just comes from other sources, other dimensions, other planetary beings, uh, the earth, beings that come from the earth, animals, trees, the soil, so it sounds almost a little bit more um, also perhaps like um, <clears throat> uh, the symbolic aspect of our life and stuff like that. And, you know, that that clear sentient ability to bring higher information in. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back. And I want to go in with you a little bit more on the shamanic aspect of this now. So we'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. We are here with Phyllis Russo, who is a uh, multi-talented healer on a multiverse level. So uh, Phyllis, again, thank you for being with us. And we were, you know, talking a little about your history and what kind of brought you to this point, but we're moving a little bit more now into something that you, you kind of specialize in that seems like it's pretty soulfully felt for you. And that's the shamanic work, not something that maybe you can always go get training in. I mean, I'm sure there are some trainings, but I really think that's a little bit more somebody'd have to have a calling and maybe some past life connections to it. But talk just a little bit about what shamanic is, how you got into that, how you uniquely do it. Well, let me say something about it. yes, you have to be taught. Um, and that that's the, the dividing line. Well, I'll give you that in just a second. Yeah, yeah. One of the things about it going the direction of shamanism, going the direction of the shaman. There's a couple things that there's like a list, you know, did you have a near death experience? Did you, do you have God's honest truth? Do you have extra limbs or extra digits or something on your body? Do you want to be a healer? Is it important for you to heal others? So there's like a list of 
20 questions. Wow. I did not know that. Yes. Yes, there was. And I probably hit about 17 of them. Wow. Um, Including the extra digits. I actually have two extra toes on my feet. Wow. Fascinating. (laughs) And I had a near-death experience when I was younger. So a lot of these, there's actually, when you say, you know, what guides you to shamanism, you're probably already it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like I know that there is training, but I feel like for most people, they, it is a calling inside of them that, you know, oh, you have to take a college course for, you know, like it is something inside of you that you've more than likely had for lifetimes and you carry the remembrance of it, like the Dalai Lama or something. Yeah. You know? Yes, absolutely. I, one of the things that have been told to me is that I have probably been here since the beginning of time. That's universal time, not even just earth time. So I'm sure this has been that sort of development throughout, you know, I don't know, billions of years, I guess, millions. Yeah. Of years. Yeah. Right. Um, the, the, the training though, one of the things that I found that was important to me, as you saw, it was important for me to, t- to train. It's not important for me to hang out a shingle and say, you know what? I feel it. I can do it. No, I definitely need training. And so, and I just find that vastly um, important in my life. So I said, I went to Malta, by the way, I moved there in 2011 and 2012, took over a practice, uh, a chiropractic practice of a friend of mine, but he knew I was already doing kind of different work anyways. And he just said, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. But they also have temples there on uh, Malta and on Gozo, which is like the sister island. And they're goddess temples. And they're the oh. oldest uh, temples in the world. Really? The world. Oh my, I had no idea. Oh, you must go to Malta. <laughs> um, wow, it's on my list now. Wait until after the pandemic though, if indeed there's ever going to be an end to that. But anyway, um, so I, I live there and I, one of the one of the temples I went to on Gozo called Gigantia. I walked in there. I think there was some tourists over there. And I said, um, oh my God, I'm home. Yeah. Like I knew it in that instant that that was where I had already resided. Well, and we do carry soul memories that go with us lifetime to lifetime. And whenever you meet a person or you travel someplace, your cellular, your soul memories will bring up and it causes mm-hmm. almost like an instant, you know, recognition. Instant recognition. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, triggers those cellular memories of what you've known. I, yeah, yeah. It was that, amazing. Yeah. So I came back to the States and I said, okay, Lord, where do you want me? Where do you see me heading? I, I want to train. I want to do this type of healing work. And I found shamanism in that. I just searched for it. I just searched for it and it came. But what was really interesting is I asked one major question and that was, I don't want to travel. I'm tired of traveling. I don't want to travel to some teacher, shaman. I, I don't. And there it was a man by the name of Steve Sir, who was, or Seer actually, who was teaching it. And I trained with him for uh, about four years, one-on-one, the old fashioned way, the way shamans did it from the beginning of time. And Um, all of the lessons that you learn are the ones that every ancient shaman has learned from the beginning of time. Wow. Yeah. And there was no plant medicine. (laughs) I've never been real good with any type of drugs anyway. So this was right up my alley. Um, And, and really what he was teaching was the original shamanism, especially out of Russia, which is we don't use plant medicine. We use the sound of the drum or the sound of the rattle, the beat, sort of this sort of inner beat of your heart. And that's how I learned and trained and um, had some difficult experiences. That's the reason why it took me so long to, to learn it. Um, But then you know, I came, I I left it for a moment because there was a tragedy that happened and then it it just kept drawing me back. And I just finally came back and and started doing it. So for me, 
first of all, my Russian, my maiden name is Savarinsky. And so I have some very strong Russian heritage. Um, I, so I relate and a lot of the spirit guides that I see are the Russian shamans, many of them. Like uh, um, I have a Russian shaman that's an old woman who just sort of lives off the land. I have a Russian male shaman that lives in one of the villages and all of these people just sort of come together. So, okay. so right there, I have a question about that, right? Uh, so um, you can so, interrupt me anytime, by the way. Yeah, you got, it. I will. <laughs> So, so, um, so with that, sometimes I wonder when we have these other guides, like sometimes I work with spirit doctors Mm -hmm. and what I noticed is when I call in my spirit doctor team, for the most part, it's been an aspect of me from a past life. So they might be different cultures, different, whatever, and it could be me. Now there are, then the other part of it could be, do you think that they are shamans within your personal lineage? Or do you think it's just that that shaman uh, dimensional realm? So like spirit doctors is a whole bunch of spirit doctors over here that can step in whenever needed if these Mm -hmm. ones don't know what they're doing, right? Or have the skill set. So, you know, there's you from past lives. Okay. Can I interrupt you now for one moment? Mm -hmm. I always think past lives is an interesting thing. Okay. I, I get it. And there is no past and there is no future. So it's all right here. So when you ask a question about those shamans, I do believe two things. One, that they're in the lineage and two, that uh, they could be here right now or they might not. (laughs) So lineage, meaning your biological blood lineage. Yes. I feel that. Do I know? Can I fully prove it? Um, It's just what you feel. That's hard. It's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's like my little, you know, my, this whole thing about time is, is probably one of the biggest things that I have to keep that I not have to, but that I keep reminding myself. And so I, I know a lot of healers work with past lives. Mm -hmm. I do something called ancestral tie extraction. So I take that ancestral tie that doesn't serve people. I take those out. But it's interesting because if you think about past lives, at least the way the way I feel it, hear it, see it, is that you could be one of those lineage people. Mm -hmm. Or and I often see that more that if you look at this sort of lineage and you keep going back, it's almost you all over again. That's what I mean. Yeah. And it is really hard to discern. What is this to me? The experience is, is it, was I that person in the past lineage? Like, and maybe I was that old woman, that old man, that child, you know what I mean? So it's, you know, but yet it is still my lineage, you know, Um, I was recently, I'm reading one of the not Han books, um, uh, these little books that he has are really cool, Mm -hmm. cool. But um, he's talking about how, you know, we are all one, meaning that, you are all your ancestors, you are all the plant, you are all the animals. Like, it seems like it kind of lends a little bit more to what you're saying, Mm -hmm. which does kind of have a sort of that mind blowing type of, we have to get beyond the box of our thinking of time. You know, even if it's past lives might seem esoteric, but in truth, even beyond that, it makes more sense if there's only ever the now, the present moment, then that's just another way that we've kind of compartmentalized our self on some level. Right. Our way of at least thinking about it to make it comfortable. Yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, I, I, didn't, I can't remember now where we were going, but anyway, um, uh, got it. Um, what was I, what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about the shaman energy and how we were talking about the guides that you saw when you, like, you have a lot of Russian heritage to you. Right. you have- Russian guides coming in. So back to the kind of the, a little bit of the training, it, it really does kind of go in that sort of direction of where I've taken it. So all the lessons that I have learned really are ancient lessons, just ancient. And so that complements that you are an ancient being as well. So you would have more of a fine tuned, refined, like purity of knowing some of this ancient stuff versus kind of the fluffy, you know, generic stuff that's out there too. Yeah. I try not to be in fluff. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's been quite a journey to get here and I'll give you just another little tad of some of the um, difficulty in the journey. And that is, is that, and this is kind of a whole other realm, but that I was born again, Christian hmm. and, and making this sort of spiritual jump um, is always a very, um, that's the, that guilt that still, um, sometimes I deal with not very much anymore. And so would you consider your born again Christian now as part of your faith, or it was something that you went through and you're at this new place now, like, uh, probably at a new place, but probably it might be all one thing anyway. Yeah. Um, like you practicing actively in your Christianity or should you just incorporate it in as I think it's, it, yeah, I think I'm, I think I make everything up. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, do, so. yeah, I, <laughs> sure I, I, do. I think You're that I incorporate, I incorporate now would somebody from the church think that that's the right thing to do? Probably not, but I, <laughs> it doesn't matter because all I do is heal. And that's all, that's my, my whole goal is service. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to talk about next with some of your healing, really cool healing techniques. We're going to take another quick break. Stay tuned. We will be back in just a moment with Phyllis Russo, an amazing shaman healer. All right. Welcome back. We are here on my wild magic with Adrian. I'm Adrian and this is Phyllis Russo. So, um, yeah. So Phyllis, if people wanted to get in touch with you, if they were interested in checking out some of your work, um, how would they get in touch with you? Well, first of all, I have a website. It's called uh, the, T-H-E, mama shaman, uh, dot com. So it, I always do it with all the A's. It's the, M-A-M-A-S-H-A-M-A-N.com. Got it. Um, Good. So that's an easy way of doing it. I, you know, I give out my number all the time. I have a business number that I give out. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. Anybody can text me. I have a Facebook page, the mama shaman. I have uh, everything's the mama shaman, mama yeah. shaman at iCloud.com. If you want to email me any of that, uh, or awesome. just just find me in the airwaves. Just listen to the drum and you'll find me. That's kind of how I'm. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, Phyllis's work is, is really unique and quite extraordinary. It works very, very deep, very powerfully. Um, I've recently had a couple of experiences with her uh, over my recent kind of health thing that I was, you know, kind of moving through over this last month. And um, she was super, super helpful. Um, the First time I called her, I was dealing with uh, C. diff. So that's a colostrum difficile or something like that. It's like an intestinal uh, uh, bacterial thing that happened from some antibiotics and a tooth being pulled. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when we kind of crossed paths recently, she did a, a very fascinating shamanic healing where um, I had felt like maybe the, the tooth that was being pulled, being hit on the side of my left head whenever I had the car accident when I was 15. And in that car accident, um, uh, a young girl also uh, made her transition from that car accident. She passed away. And my father had died just six months earlier, eight months earlier, something like that. So there was all these things and the way it was affecting my digestion and the tooth, all of it was very connected. And so Phyllis really started asking which I'm assuming kind of came more clear sentient sort of knowingness to ask these questions. Right. Um, let, let me, it's funny because you go, you know, I'd like to talk about our thing. And I'm like, Oh God, I don't even remember it. Um, and I don't until you said something. And that was about your dad and the, the woman that, um, that, um, left the, Jill. yeah, Jill, who passed away. Yeah. but we actually did the psychopomp work. Yeah, which so was that is it's very so, interesting. So, so the interesting, interesting thing about the shaman is is that, and this is something again through my four years of training, at the I thought I was complete. I thought I did all the things, and it was like you know number such and such lesson, and oh yes, I'm done, and I get to now call myself. And there was one more 
<laughs> that had to be done. And it was psychopomp. And it was interesting because I go, oh, for goodness sakes. I mean, it like, sounds like an 80s dance move, you know, I, psychopomp. I, you know? I, I think pomp just means to issue in. Pom, pompo means like to issue in or to help others or to guide. And so when I found out about that, this is the quintessential part of being a shaman. I'm like, oh, for goodness sakes, because I had actually already done that like years ago. And that is, I will see people on the other side. Now, don't mix it up with a medium, even though I can speak with them and, and see the people on the other side. But my job is always to get them through the portal because especially people who are quick death, die in an accident. Yeah. Both of, both of my people happen to be quick yeah. one. Uh, my father was hit by a truck on a bicycle hit and run. And then the girl in the car accident, Jill was hit, you know, died pretty much within the hour of our car accident. When I lost control of the car, hit a telephone pole in the rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what happens in, in these souls is they get kind of stuck. Uh, I, a shock basically. Yeah. Like including the, animals, sometimes animals who have been hit by car, you can almost so, sort of sense their spirit by the side of the road. So sometimes it just, yeah. It's an interesting phenomenon. I, I, and I'm going to get off topic, but I, I remember walking a, um, a walk like a, for veterans or for, for those that have died in, in battle. And I'm walking, I'm walking and I was kind of feeling sorry for myself because I was walking by myself. And then I'm like, what? I'm not walking by myself. And all of a sudden, all these posters of these men and women who have died, they started looking at me like, help me. And by the end of this eight, 10 mile walk, I had issued like a hundred people through the portal. And you never know how old these souls are. They could have been sticking around for centuries. Yeah. Yeah. True. So um, anyways, that's what we did with you. And so I do that with family members. I do that with, um, you know, people that we love, people that are down the street. You know, it's like, hey, I've got somebody in my house, house clearings I do, but not just like, oh, we're going to wave some sage. I'm sorry. I do have a tendency to be a little bit pompous. A little bit on the arrogant side, but I'm not the sage. Per Don't call me just to sage your house. I, if somebody's there, I will get them through the portal. And oftentimes people are like, oh, but they're mean and they do things. And it's like, mm -mm. no, they're just lost and they're bored. And they, if they tip a glass over, it's because they want your attention. And all, a lot of times they're just waiting for me. It's like, yeah. hey, do you know Nishimta? Do you know Phyllis? Just, can you have her come over to the house? That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in any case, that's what we did for them. And then keep on going because we did more stuff for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did sort of go in and um, kind of help them sort of clear over. And I, I do think, you know, that a lot of times when souls pass away, I think of it kind of like this and let me know what you think. But I think that a lot of times when souls pass away, they do go into maybe an astral realm or they go a little bit higher. They are, let's say, oh, in yeah. the light. They probably do have angels around them. And so a lot of times when people do readings, they're like, yes, they're in the light. Yes, they got angels around them. And that probably is true. But yet, because we're multidimensional beings, there could be an aspect of consciousness that also may be stuck at the location where they died, if it was war or accidents or hospitals or um, yes, whatever, or their, or their home, they might be able to make it back to their house, yeah, but, then, yeah. but then other people inhabit it. And so then they are stuck in that house. Right. So it's sort of like an aspect of them is in this light and angels and whatever, but they might be a little bit in a holding pattern if they maybe are a bit stuck or um, in shock cut for whatever reason, weren't able to fully process the experience. That's, that's very the true. Astral very mental true. level. Maybe. Um, the, I believe the other thing we also did on you was spirit extraction and that had to do yeah. with from your gut. Correct? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Cause I did have all the gut stuff going on. And, and so that's a really good point. Cause I think a lot of times what happens is we have physical ailments, but I don't ever think of the physical ailment as 
a physical ailment. I think what's the emotion, what's the belief system, the thought form, the experience, the cellular memory, what else is going on there energetically to have even attracted that or what's trying to heal out of that. Yeah. In this case, I feel like there were some things I was ready to release that was simply showing up in the form of C. diff. Right. I agree. So, um, so with the extraction, explain a little bit more about that. So I was going to say it's different than, um, that's different than psychopomp, right? Because it's not about like somebody else being in you. It's, it's sort of, a uh, sometimes, uh, it's an entity more or less. And mm-hmm. so it's a little bit different and this entity and other people who have passed over can sometimes also have relationships to entities Yes. that then can be left behind, which I think was the point you were making that this right. was Jill, yeah. Jill, she had her own very hardships in life, perhaps sexual abuse, things that were going on for her. It attracted in some entities, some heavier emotions, heavier spirit energy. And when she died and because of our connection, they might've kind of latched on to me out of my guilt, my shame, my emotional connection, whatever. And I opened a door, not even realizing in that moment, particularly at 15. Yeah. And that's so, I I love what you just said, because it really can be our own emotions that actually attract those, those type of entities that come to us. Um, You know, I found it interesting. This story always, to me, is the heart of it. There was a gentleman that lived down the hallway from me. I lived in this beautiful high rise down in Dallas um, up until recently. And there was a gentleman down the hallway, had moved in. He was an alcoholic. He was in your face. He was one of the most obtrusive human beings I've ever met. And it was like, get my, get, get my cats away from him. I never, I don't want to talk to the guy. Well, he ended up dying. Um, and I, I don't know how he passed away, but he passed away in his place, which was just down the hall for me. So the management of this 22 story, uh, building said, I know what you do. Can you go in there? Cause you know, we can't sell the place. Moment. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We can't sell the place and so on and so forth. Well, what I realized was he wasn't, and I know this is obvious, but I'm going to say it again. He wasn't a bad man. He had this entity on him since he was uh, five years old. And it's just so interesting. And so he became this sort of culmination of who he became because this entity was on the influence of that. Yeah. Right. And so that obviously opens you up to going as a counselor, you go, well, this person is this way because his mother or his father or his sister brothers or his friends treated him a certain way. But then the other part is um, they have, maybe they had entities on them when they were three and four and five years old. Yeah. And didn't really know how to deal with it. A lot of kids are very open. And a lot of times if you have parents with unresolved emotions, traumas, PTSD, coming back from war, alcoholism, okay. addictions, drugs, uh, sexual abuse, there's all these doorways that they come in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're gonna take a quick break. Super, super fascinating. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. We are here with Phyllis Russo. And um, so uh, I'm glad if you have stayed in tune with us um, up to this point, I am super happy about that because Phyllis is going to do um, a little bit of drumming, clear some energy for us. Um, we're also going to talk about the Healy. The, the second session I had with Phyllis was actually with the Healy. Can you show them the little Healy just for a minute for anybody who's looking? Just like a tiny little thing. And it runs through an app, a program or whatever. And it has thousands of programs in it that can help send frequencies of positive emotion to you or help to clear things in your physical body. And after this month-long you know, journey I've been on, um, I have just been crash and burn low energy, right? And in one session with the Healy, uh, all of a sudden it's like it, it moved something that my whole energy came back up to like a more normal range for me. Uh, so thank you so much for that. So the Healy is like a very futuristic um, quantum technology vibrational resonance tool that Phyllis is also trained in to add to her uh, list, you know, skill there. Anything you want to say about the Healy before we maybe do a little bit of drumming and clearing kind of thing? How, how does the Healy work? How does, how does that work that you can be here and I can be here 
And all of a sudden vibrations come in. Like I could literally feel like a band around my head. I could feel some angels come in. I could feel this calm peacefulness, like just being a little bit sensitive to energy. You can literally feel the vibrations, the rays, the waves of energy coming into your body. I've had it done twice and I felt it both times. Yeah. I, um, first of all, I'm, I'm actually running, well, I haven't run it yet, but I am, I turned it on so I can at least show you some of the, or mention some of the programs in it. It works by the quantum field. If you understand any quantum theory, it really is about particles of matter and that, that never stay still. And so all we are is just frequency. It just looks like we're matter, but, but that's what makes matter up is frequency. And so the gentleman who started this, um, Marcus, and I never can pronounce his last name, so I'm not even going to, we're just going to call him Marcus. Um, he started something called the way, uh, oh, for goodness sakes, I've had it myself, uh, wave something. And uh, I'll think about it. And it was a computerized system and it was a big computer. And he said, you know what? I want healing in every human being. And so I'm going to make it, you know, where they can hold it in their hand. And I'm going to put in it, it literally, I think it has something like 160,000 frequencies in it. Okay. And so some of them are just as simple as, Hey, uh, pain. I just worked on a client. I was working on a client at the same time I was with you, but I have all my Heelys all over the house. Um, he smashed his finger and the pain was excruciating. So the first things I did was run the pain programs. Pain has gone away within the hour after we ran it and right. it hasn't come back. And then you run programs for, to regenerate the skin, to regenerate the bones, the connective tissue, that sort of thing. But it also works. There's one program called body, mind, and soul. And you just do frequencies to harmonize the body and frequencies. How does it, how does prayer work? Works the same way. Intention. Quantum prayer field. Exactly. Yeah. Intention is the quantum field. That's number one. The first is intention. And from there, everything else happens. So it has things like, what do we do for your soul, for your well-being? Um, it has stuff. I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. Wait a minute. Let me think about it. Um, programs for that you can put together for spike proteins. We'll just say that. Yeah, sure. um, and it works. Uh, we'll put things together for depression. So I'm going to tell you a little story about my, myself. And that is um, my father passed away in uh, a la not last year anymore, uh, October of 2020. Um, he was an incredibly loved man. And to me, he was my heart. I moved to Michigan for the last five months of his life and, and took care of him and was there all the way, did, did death rituals for him, even though he wasn't totally awake with it and then might not have been fully on board while, while he was, um, you know, on the morphine. But, um, but I, I wanted to make sure that he would get his proper direction. And um, anyways, we were there until the end. Um, why did I bring that up? Oh, because I got depressed. And in my depression, I just wanted to go. I was just can't okay. deny it. I was suicidal. And yeah. so I had somebody who did this on me before I got any of these. Um, and she said, uh, can I do the depression program on you? And I'm like, well, you know, go ahead. But, you know, right afterwards, I'm still going to want to jump off of a bridge or something. So um, I, but if you want to do it for you, you go right ahead. So she did it. It was only a 20 minute program. And within 24 hours, um, it's a long, it's kind of a long, short story. And we only have so much time. I'm just going to tell you, I was more at peace than I was for the previous two and a half years. Wow. You said yours was months, like a month. Mine was two and a half years. There yeah. was nothing like that feeling. Now, could it have been coincidental? There was two more situations that happened and I won't go into it for time purposes, but I'm telling you every single one of them was a miracle right after a miracle, right after a miracle. Yeah. And it's, it's really neat technology. And I will tell you, it, it, saying it the way I just did, Healy is the manifestation of A Course in Miracles. Hmm. They are miracles. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so it works. It's such an advanced things. science. It's like some being from far off in the future came in and said, look what we're going to show you now. It's like fire for a human. It, this is called the Healy and it will help you just as much as fire did in your, in your evolution. I, I actually have always called a God in a box. God in a box. That's even, that's even better. That's perfect. <laughs> of course, he's kind of all over the place, but, um, but yeah, it's, it is an amazing, and I've done modality after modality. You said my, what my background was in the very beginning. And certainly the shaman, the drum, the, the, the beauty of the journey, the depth of the journey, the information of the journey, nothing else tops it in my career. I'm, 64 years old. I've been doing healing. Looking good. Looking great. Yeah. Vibrant. I've been been, um, doing this since I've been 20, basically. Yeah. And and so shaman, this work is like, okay, and all and be all it's I'm done. And then Healy came along. And so it's, uh, I certainly haven't left my shamanic work, but the integration of it I, it's just bar none. Um, and, and so many people, then if you could, um, say numbers, I would say more people have healed in the last couple of years of my journey as a healer than in, in all of it. I can't explain yeah, that. That's pretty. Yeah. Well, you also, I think the Healy, what it's doing, why you can easily call it God in a box is because it's a way of like, uh, I don't know how this little thing works, but it just feels like it taps into all the source energy, universal frequencies, which we can do as a human being. We just yes. maybe don't take the time to do it. This is a dedicated sort of um, intention, right? And this tool that helps to do that. So uh, we got about three minutes left. And um, again, so if anybody wants to do a session with Phyllis, check her out at the mama shaman.com. If anybody's interested in my um, kind of upgraded uh, meditation classes that I do on Wednesday, hearts on fire, hearts on fire.com hearts on fire, my Okay. Now, so tell, tell me a little bit about what you're going to do in like a synopsis and then we'll go straight. You into know it. what? I don't know, except I'm, I am being drawn to somebody who's listening. I'm feeling like there's a number 50 and that's all. So I, at first I was like, is this a number 50 of um, people or is it the number 50? So there's something about the number 50 with someone. That's cool. I'm just going to see it as kind of the group energy that we're working with in the moment. And whoever may listen later will obviously benefit as well. So very, very high spirit. Thank you for attracting that, Adrian. Um, the Yen of the Yemen of the Revision of the Yelia of Panin of Yami in the Ria in the Vin. So, just everybody who's listening, just relax, breathe. I've done healing circles every um, like every Sunday nights, um, but I am no longer doing them anymore. The only ones I am doing are in Malta, obviously over Zoom. Um, and there's some big ones that we're doing in March, uh, March 19th and March 20th. And can so people find that on your website? I will uh, make sure I add it in. Okay, cool. So we are coming to a close. So thank you so much for bringing in that beautiful healing energy, some of those shamanic frequencies. And uh, it's just been an honor to be having you on the show as one of the most ancient beings on the planet. So Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing your wisdom and your beautiful light with us. So um, yeah, so check her out, themamashaman.com. 
Thanks for tuning in to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Each one of us has a sole purpose on this earth and a higher purpose full of creative expression and unique soul attributes. Make sure to tune in next week on TransformationTalkRadio.com to continue your journey home to your truest self and pursue the path of unconditional self-love. If you would like to learn more about me, visit MyWildMagic.com. Again, that's MyWildMagic.com. Dot com.